Welcome to the Freedom Path Investors Podcast, where we'll talk all things real estate investing with some of the top investors in the nation. Here are your hosts, Brian Johnson and Jake LaRose. All right, what's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. We're back, Freedom Path Investors Podcast. All of our legions of fans out there legions. have a special treat today. Um, we got another local St. Louis guy here, Jason Palliser. He's been in the real estate space for how many years, Jason? Um, I'm not trying to show my age. Yeah, 25. Your beer, your beer <laughs> but I have a new liver, so I feel like I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, Jason, we're gonna, we're gonna talk a lot about lead generation today and um, just everything you've got going on with your team sure. here. And uh, we're actually next door neighbors to Jason's team, so um, we talk to them a lot. We, we we know what they've got going on, but um, just get into Jason. Tell us a little bit about um, you know your first experience in the real estate investing space and um, yeah, what kind of led you here today. Okay, so. Yeah, I'll give you a little, you know, I'll pull back the curtain, give you a little bit of background on how we're here. So, uh, yes, born and raised in St. Louis, live in Tampa, St. Pete now, as you gentlemen know. And if you notice the tan, you know, yeah, got from. a little bit of a tan. You're right. Yeah. That's right. I got tan lines. I'll show you later. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, 25 years in the investing space and investment funding space. So, I started out doing investment funding, specialty funding. Uh, was number one in Missouri for the number of closings per year, top 100 in the nation, because I specifically dealt with investors that do multiple deals, right? And um, so from there, uh, what I quickly found out is that uh, I learned every program that there was. Most most bankers learn two or three programs and shove everybody into those. So I made it my business to know it, to start learning every investment program that there was. And what, the byproduct of that was that all of a sudden, not only in St. Louis, but people from all over were starting to come and say, hey, I heard that you can give me funding on properties where other people can't get funding, right? So um, so you were working primarily with investors? Definitely? Yeah, I mean, 90 per, 95% of investors, you know, I do primary home refinance and purchase and stuff, but yeah. I was doing mostly for investors. And so what happened was this, I quickly realized, you know, people, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting them unstuck and getting them more deals, right? And they're going to closing. I'm making money as a banker, an investment banker, and they're high fiving me when I'm leaving. But I'm leaving the closing, making two grand or three grand, and they're high fiving me like, "Thanks, Jason. Thanks for helping me get that deal to the finish line." And they're making like forty grand. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I did get a degree in finance and one class away from my minor in economics. This doesn't seem very equitable. <laughs> sure. So. What I, so I woke up one day, I'm like, well, I got what everybody wants, which is the funding side of it. So I'm, I'm going to start investing. So then I started investing myself. And because I had funding, I would just go, go out. I'm like, oh, this looks like a good enough deal. This looks like, and I was doing everything wrong. <laughs> and um, But I was still having fun with it. I was like, yeah, screw that one up. Who cares? I got more funding, right? And um, so after skinning my knee on a few deals, I finally started going back to some of the investors because I had thousands of them at this point, and I had some that were good with doing lease options, some that would do fix and flip, some that would do rental. So I just started bending their ear and say, hey, I've helped you fund 100 deals. Um, show me how to do this. And so I was stuck on one of my rehabs, and I was getting to the finish line. Market was hot, but then it started to slow down, and I was into it for 220. I was going to try and sell it for 275. The market started turning, and then um, I had an offer at 220 and I'm like, this market's hot, I'm not gonna lose money. So I passed that one up. Fast forward three or four months, now all of a sudden things are around 230, 240, now it's skinny and um, minus realtor commissions and stuff, I'd lose money. So I went to one of my investors and my, he's like, let's lease option this. So instead of selling it for a loss, he showed me the lease option, so I did that. Okay. And I uh, made a bunch of money, uh, 10 years, because I held on it for 10 years and had three different people. So oh, wow. from there, um, the, the the TV shows and, you know, uh, Flipping San Diego, Flipping Boston, the Rich Dad Poor Dads, yeah. they hired me for my expertise on funding. But what they found was that after I did get my rhythm and skim my knee a few times and saw the value of it, like, just like I did in the investment space, learning everything that I, that I could ever learn, I did the same thing on the real estate side. And I, I quickly realized that, once these places were hiring me to speak, that 
I had a superior skill set that I didn't know was so valuable to people, which was I made it my business to know how to market and get to everything first. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I, I, I started to see this is giving me bigger spreads on my, my investment deal. So then these bigger companies like the Rich Dads, they came and said, hey, our students say that we, they, we taught them a technique, but they can't get to the properties first. So started building training and programs um, for that and different TV shows because I could get to everything first and market well. And um, so then lastly from there, um, some hedge fund level players started coming to me and said, hey, you're getting everything first. Can you build it out for us? We need to average 30 homes a month, 40 homes a month, 50 homes a month. And so we're sitting here now having conversations and I'm sure we'll jump into lead generation about that. But when the hedge funds give me 60 grand, 70 grand, 120 grand a month budgets, I get to test everything under the sun. I don't test pre foreclosures versus probate. I test 70 different versions of pre foreclosure, 70 different versions of probate to find out what wins. And my whole existence now is using big companies budgets to drill down their big budgets to drill down how to do it without a budget. If that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yep, and yep. so that's why we're here today. So yeah, my team's next door and you guys work with them and, and um, you see what we do. We, we run circles around. Yeah, that. it makes sense. I mean, we've been through your training so we can speak, speak on it, but uh, so to back it up just a little bit. So when you decided you want to be a real estate investor for yourself, yeah. You said you kind of skinned, skinned your knees or whatever. Uh, were you just were you just going out there on the MLS to find deals and say this looks like a good property? Yeah, I found some I found some deals from other investors. You know, in hindsight, you know, 20 years ago, they, they just did a spread and wholesale to me. I didn't even realize what wholesaling was back then. I'm like, yeah. hey, if it's a good enough deal. And they, and they, made, they had a little bit of equity. They were making some cash flow. But I didn't know, you know. You know, taking applications for people to rent my properties. I was just like, they're making money. I'm going to make money, right? Yeah. And um, so I like I, I don't want to say I was doing everything wrong. I just didn't honestly. I just didn't really care that much. But yeah. once I started to see that, okay, I could lose money on a deal or two here, or just not make what I thought I would make. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to apply the same maniacal skill set to figure out everything and and uh, do the research to do it right because I'm a logistics guy. Yeah. Um, and then uh, start building out systems and programs in place to do that. And as you guys know, built and sold a real estate automation software company called REI Blackbook. Yeah, sure. Used by some of the largest companies in America today. So in today's world, I just get hired by companies just like you guys yep. to say, hey, show us how to get to off market properties 34 ways, not the same five or six ways that gurus do. Right. right. So you, you were part of hundreds of deals on the lending side. You started dabbling around. Did you get a, a coach early on, or did you say you kind of leaned on some of the investors that you had met through um, those circles? Or? So when I – and, um, and I, think, I think if you follow me when I say this and you listen intently, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of laugh like I did. I didn't – since I didn't put much stock into who's good at what or who does this or who does that, just because – because everyone was coming to me. Right. Everybody's coming to me for funding, so – I didn't know how well versed somebody was on something, but what I started to find out was that some of the biggest players in America for cash flow and assets were coming to me for funding because I was the nation's authority on getting funding where people couldn't get funding, right? And um, some of the nation's authorities on, on uh, nation's authority on lease lease options were coming to me, but I didn't know that they were right. So when I started leaning, uh, all I did was just go into my database and say, okay, who's who's doing 15, 20 lease options a month. And I would go talk to them and say, hey, uh, tell me a little bit more about that. So when I run in the situation, right? Yeah. Hey, who's like, you know, I've worked with people at this point where I put the systems, the two, what we call the two day blueprint, right? Uh, we put a two day blueprint in place, an off market blueprint, 34 ways. Some of my clients have done, like one of my clients did 9,000 homes in six years. Cool. Oh, it's well. <laughs> yeah. Just a wow. few, just a few houses, right? So, when they hire me, they hire me to beat everyone to everything, suffocate the city, bypass everyone, do it without a budget, and and get to the finish line faster than everybody else. So I, I just started leaning on their expertise, but then I started paying attention. I'm like, oh, uh, I'm going to start surveying my clients and find out who's the best of the best at X, Y, and Z. And then they would tell me what they were doing. And what I would do privately is go back, based upon what they told me, I would go back privately myself and reverse engineer what they told me and, and make it sharper, faster, less less movement, better, and come back to them with it. And then they started paying me for that. They're like, hey, 
I'm also doing this. Can you reverse engineer this? And um, it's just how my brain works. Like I've been hired outside. Everybody knows me for real estate investment and, and um, the to get to everything first, right? And um, and then that for that negotiations. But I do stuff outside of real estate. I've been hired by. I mean, I've closed deals um, with companies owned by the former CEO of Walmart for logistics. Like, how do I take a moving part, any any part of real estate, and then deconstruct it and put it back together so that it moves faster, cheaper, and performs better, stronger with less movement. So those are the things that I like. Would you say this is a superhuman ability you have, or was this something you went to college for and was just kind of always your expertise? Logistics, you went to college for logistics? No, I did not go to college for logistics, but but here, for anybody that's doing real estate, since we're playing in the sandbox today, right? And yourself yourself included, myself too. all the people that we train, we just finished a two-day blueprint this last weekend for people from all over the U.S. that came to do a build-out with us, right? What I tell everybody is this. I went to college for economics and, and um, finance. I like numbers and supply and demand and all that stuff. But I saw the value post-college in paying for stuff. So I paid to get good at logistics from people that consult for billion-dollar companies. And now it, it's kind of like in the Matrix at the end where they figure everything out. So, figure everything out. There's chaos, the whole movement at the end when you figure it out. Like chaos is coming at you, what I call moving parts and logistics, and they're shooting at you and you go, no. (laughs) And the bullets go to the ground. So um, I've dove full, uh, you know, both feet full force into logistics. Like what are moving parts? What's out there that can solve some some of the moving parts of real estate? All the way down to like, you know, um, negotiations, you know, I talked to you guys, you guys were there. Seller Waltz. Seller Waltz. You guys were, you guys were in class. I can't remember who I picked on. Um, Ryan. Was it Ryan? Yeah. Pro, yeah, Ryan. Yeah. I, I, you know, that's logistics, right? You can say, anybody listening to this, you guys, myself included, our, our team next door, anybody can talk to a seller and say 50 different things. I pay attention to what order we say it in, what voice inflection we say it in, what we do, what we don't do. Um, I pay, I pay attention to the percentages of how often does a seller tell you no? So we know when we go on an appointment that 97% of the time we're going to be a part of our price. So what we do is we build we build negotiations around assuming a no and then reverse engineer that 10 different ways. And you guys saw live in class. I told Ryan, I'm like, hey, Ryan, you want 100 grand for the house that needs a little bit of work. Don't sell to me. And I said, all you got to do when this game is saying no, 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 no. And what did I get him to do in 90 seconds? He started cracking under pressure. Well, maybe. Let me think about it. He's like, yeah. This you know, is a imaginary be, house. Yeah, he might be, I might be interested. And everybody started. You guys were laughing. I was laughing. So um, what I would tell anybody that's listening, hey, to run your business like a real machine, pay attention to each moving part. You've got front-end lead generation, yep. right? In the middle, you've got the systems to keep everything organized. Otherwise, you're doing it on paper and post-it notes, right? So you've got... Um, your tracking systems that we build out like, like you guys saw. And um, so we organize stuff that way. And you got the front end lead generation. You can't do the same five things that everybody else does. And I can even say it and, and everybody at home would laugh. Do and then text, on the back text end, message? Yeah, text message. Football, yeah, yeah. yeah, so and I'll talk about that. And then on the back end, you have to negotiate well. You have to be the most valuable to the seller every single time, whether you buy their house or not. If you're the most valuable every time, I'll show you an investor that's bypassing their competition. And yeah, to, to the point that you just said, uh, folks, you know, sexy terms are lead generation and systems and process and all these gurus have this stuff. So when you hear this, okay, so for those of you who hear this uh, podcast, tell me, uh, and, you know, reach out to them. You can reach out to me. I'm sure they'll put my information on there or whatever. But think about this. Does this sound familiar to you? And if so, then we can certainly help you with a two-day blueprint. But here's what most gurus do. So you follow this podcast, another podcast, uh, a Facebook group, a YouTube channel, um, Maxwell House or Max Maxwell, whatever the hell you call those Maxwell. guys. <laughs> whatever you call them, get to the last drop, supposedly. Yeah. Right? So here's what they do. And I know this sounds familiar to you. They say, hey, get some vacants, get a high equity absentee owner list, get some code violations, water disconnects, 
get some property stream, or we have some proprietary stuff that pulls data, which is really property stream that's white labeled, right? Yeah. Hey, pull all this data, and then we're going to do postcards and letters and be consistent. And we're sophisticated, so we do text message blasts. And then they call that training. Folks, um, those are the same five things that everybody does. Um, when we do a blueprint, we show people 34 ways we get to off-market properties. I'm sure all those people that are following those gurus and doing that whole process, I mean, those are the people that get the other sellers on the other end saying, oh, you're the 10th person I talked to today. You're the 10th person I've talked to today. Go ahead and make your offer low yeah. ball, you know. So we do techniques in, um, and uh, if it's okay, I'll just say a technique. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so that um, so so listen, there's a different level to do this stuff at, right? Now, I'll give you an example. Out of 34 different techniques, one of my favorite ones of all time is delinquent property tax homeowners, because if you're marching to tax sale, it's probably a free and clear house because the bank would have already foreclosed. So, um, just here in this podcast alone, you should attack delinquent property tax homeowners just because they're some of the best spreads of all time. But removing that for a second, what does everybody do? Hey, before you lose your house of tax sale, let me put some cash in your pocket. Cash in your pocket. Let me yeah. put some cash in your And guess what? They have a hundred of those. So if they choose you and get you on the phone, if they choose you out of a hundred, first of all, it's a lottery draw. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, they'll talk to two or three of you and they'll go, hey, just just I got a hundred just like everybody else, just make your offer. Just, we've all been on an appointment where the seller's got a stack of postcards. It's like, stack oh, I just drew your name off the top, and you're here now. No, I was gonna say one of the one of the differentiating factors between your training and maybe other people's training is that you know, like you do attack the tax delinquents and the pre foreclosures and the probates and all that, like everyone else does. But your verbiage on how to speak to them so that you do stand out, so you're not just a one in a hundred card or whatever mail yeah. piece. That's the differentiating factor, and that's how you get ahead of the game. Like to, your team. Like we both use the same tile company, or, or, or we're sharing the same tile company, and they'll they'll we'll go to their clothes and be like, these guys get the craziest leaves. Like, <laughs> like I don't know where they're picking. They're like legitimately they're like I don't know where they're getting these people from. So here, I, if, we're being, if we're being honest, right? <laughs> I know you guys are drilling holes in the wall to listen in over in our office. That, that TV's fake. Yeah, that TV's fake back there. I know it is, right? So yeah, so and here, and I'll and I'll kind of pull back the curtain a little bit. So what he's saying is this: is that when we teach somebody, we're like, hey, look, you, of course, you know, gurus say to go to this lead source or that lead because they're motivated leads. Of course you should. Yeah. But when everybody does the same thing, the sellers gloss over. They're like, oh, you're just like everybody else. So what we do, because I've had big budgets to test it, I've done this in 140 plus cities. So any day you wake up or if you're hearing this podcast, I'm already doing it in 100 plus cities. So I get, I get the advent of collecting all the data and test everything. So as an example, where you attack delinquent property tax homeowners and what you guys learned in training was that when everybody says, hey, I'll put cash in your pocket, and the seller's like, oh, make your offer. We send stuff out like this, and I'll just go off the top of my head, which if you're hearing this, it should probably scare you um, that I'm going off the top of my head. But we send out, we send out marketing because I've tested 70 variations of it that sound like this. Hey, Mr. Smith, I'm 123 Candy Lane. Hey, look, we know you're behind on your property taxes. At our tax care organization, we help pool funds together to potentially pay part of those back taxes for you for those who qualify for assistance. If you'd like to see if you're available for assistance, um, you can email us at, call us at, visit us at, and reference tax assistance code TAC424001, and we'll see what we can do for you in 48 hours. Program note, we, we only will give tax assistance to somebody who owns one property. Any owner, homeowner owning more than one property uh, can only receive assistance on one property per our guidelines. Why? Because that sounded good. And um, and uh, visit us at and and so it, sincerely eligibility department. So where they call you and say make your offer, it goes like they call us and say hey I'm calling about tax assistance code TAC four two four zero zero one. They're ready to talk to. So what they do when they call us, they're, they're seeing if we can help them. And so we'll say yeah, tell us how you got the situation. Give us about two minutes. We'll ask about the house. And as long as the house isn't falling down, it's okay if it needs work because quite frankly, a lot of them do, and that's probably why you're in this situation. So just tell us what's wrong, and uh, give us 48 hours, we'll see what we can do. And again, at the blueprint, I'm not going to pull back the full curtain. You know, we throw them into three buckets. Like you said, it's the verbiage that, that paints the picture for them, right? Yeah. But here's the thing I need you to understand, folks. One, they're on the phone with us, not you. Two, <laughs> when they call us, they spill their guts. They tell us everything about the house. The house needs this, 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 and this. I'm in the situation because of this. 
they tell us everything. They're so motivated to talk to us. I ask them their favorite color. They're like purple, <laughs> right? And so they've told us everything. So now we know how to craft a solution for them and close the deal, right? So yeah, so what you you're right. The verbiage and stuff um, tested at nauseum. Like we have it down to a science, as you guys saw. I mean, yeah. quite frankly, one of the techniques that we taught you before you even came to our training, because our team was yeah. nice enough to go ahead and say, hey. This is one thing that we're doing, unless you drill the hole in the wall and just snake it from them. No, no they, they uh, share that with us out of the kindness of their heart. No spying involved. Yeah, no spying. And I'm not going to give away what it was exactly, but yeah, it's something we applied right away and got immediate results. Um, I think I told you it pretty much saved our uh, December, fourth, yeah. fourth quarter last year. Yeah, saved your fourth quarter. Yeah. So, one of the te- so, out of the 34 techniques that we teach when we do a two day blueprint for clients, is that uh, 18 of those techniques are free. So we talked to you guys, one of our, our office right next door here said, Hey, try this out. Yeah. And, um, and like they just said, that saved their December, they closed four deals and it's a free technique. You didn't have to start your car. It didn't impact any marketing budget, your bank account, the money that's in there was still the same. Yep. And literally you got homeowners raising their hand. you got leads, went on appointments, locked up the deals and closed three or four deals off of that technique, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think too, the, the profit that and you can made. tell them it's on Facebook. So we teach yeah. you how to get free, free motivated sellers off of Facebook, not Facebook ads. Very deliberate, distinct ways that we do that. So the profit we made on that was probably quadruple or, or even five times what it costs to actually go to the blueprint. Yeah, and exactly. it's a, and it paid for yeah. itself. It's great. And so, like, so you go to the blueprint, and, uh, and for anyone listening, there's a lot of good information there. And Jason's kind enough that he shares that with you when you leave, so you don't have to like write all of these notes down. So that's really yeah. super powerful. But what's also really powerful is you don't have to do all 34 techniques. You don't have to do the full seller walls. You don't have to do all these strategies all at one time. You start making money right away with yeah. one or two things and then build your way up. But that's something you should talk about a lot in the blueprint, right? Like don't yeah. build your brain. Yeah. So what we do is this, um, cause it's human nature. And even as you're listening now, you're like, God dang it. I'm going to go back. I want to watch this 10 times. Rewind it right down yeah. his email. Jesus, yeah. said this, <laughs> Jesus said this about the tax stuff and it flowed off his tongue. Like, so we have all that built out. And um, so what, what they're saying is this, when you come to a blueprint, we've built everything in a mind map, meaning you can kick back, take notes if you want, but we're walking you through an operations map that we do for hedge funds that need 2000 homes in the city. We don't walk in and say chapter one, the hedge funds to throw us out on our ear. I'm like what the, we build out step by step. Hey, do this first 17 times. It'll take you three minutes. Do this 25 times. It'll take you four minutes. None of this requires you any budget or even start your car. And we walk you through what a perfect day looks like. So one of our tabs that we taught you guys was the perfect day, right? Yep. Inside that perfect day where we say, do these things because we're already doing it in a hundred cities that produce deal after deal. And you can get it done in two hours. We just need you to duplicate our efforts. It's right in front of the rise. And then they have the map now when we're done, just like our clients, just like the ones this last week. And they're, they were kicking back. They're like, I can't believe that we're getting the map that you're teaching us from, right? But it's step by step. And the last thing that I will say, I will echo what you said. We teach you 34 techniques. It clearly states in your perfect day that we're going to have you run again and again and again and again, down to a science. It states in there at the bottom of the perfect day, it says work on one, one new technique at a time. When that one's running smoothly, then we introduce another one yep. and another one. So, yeah, you don't have to have all 34 to – start closing deals just each we wouldn't teach a technique if it's not closing deals so each one of the 34 is powerful right so you can close deals asap immediately without a budget i mean that mind map might be worth the price of admission just in itself because like you said there's a lot to, to take in after the event i think the next day i told him i'm like i oh, mean i need another i need a day off just to decompress and have our minds you know it's like drinking from a fire hose yeah, I have it. But like, having that mind map to fall back on has been huge. So. Yeah, I have it on. I like literally have it on my phone right here. Um, so the blueprint was over yesterday. I already have clients going. Hey, I got leads. I got appointments. I got I, I got seller appointments. Awesome. And there's no way that they could have deployed any technique that costs any money in, in 16 hours. Yeah, one of the guys that was there, he you were, I forget which technique you were going over, but he literally did it on his phone right there and there. And made 45 grand. Was that yeah? Yeah, so like it's just that instantaneous. Yeah. I mean, you got to jump on it and take action for sure. But like you said, just pick a couple and get going on that. You're going to make money. Yeah, so the blueprint that they came to while I was teaching the techniques, again, that you can do without starting your car, you can do from your, some of the techniques we're teaching you to do from your phone. He he did it live in class and things, Matt. He did it live in class. And um, 
locked up a motivated seller lead live in class. And then the second day, the blueprint, he goes, I think I already got it resold. And now we're a month or so removed. And he made 45 grand. That's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. Zero point zero. Is that when I had to leave early? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think I was there for that part. Luckily, I had you to take notes for me. Brian thought it was so valuable that he left. Did that, didn't that mess up, Jason? Yeah, it's a little one, one and a half day blueprint guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you, you lead him to water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, you teach all these 30 plus ways to lead gen. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing to me was probably the seller walls, just because you can do all that to get the phone to ring and you know find leads, but you got to go out and close them or have somebody on your team that can do it. So, yeah. Um, Without going through the whole seller waltz, I mean, what could you like just for the audience kind of explain your whole mindset around that? Um, yeah. So when we teach it, and and, I, and I'll say it to you this way: I'll I'll take one step back and then springboard it forward. Eighty um, percent of the people that come to a two-day blueprint, they come to have us build out their lead flow and tracking systems, have their operations map, so they don't have to think; they just wake up and do follow their perfect day. Um, but 20% of the people that schedule to come to a blueprint um, are acquisitions teams sent yeah. from other comp big companies. And so they, they just come there for day two when we teach the seller waltz, how we interact with the seller, and uh, and learn negotiations and uh, acquisitions and deal structures from us, right? So so to, to your point, and, and you want me to speak about, I, I would tell everybody this. Look, the foundation that we lay is that we expect every seller to tell us no. So we're prepared for that. So, so what we do is we teach we teach you, and again, I won't go into a ton of techniques, but I'll give you a couple. But um, we teach that you have to be the most valuable. You can't control what you can control. You cannot control what a seller wants for price. And I'll even lay the foundation this way for you, because if if as you listen to this, if you've been doing this for any length of time, this has happened to you. Um, We've all had, most of us, uh, we've all had where on a Monday we talk to a property owner and, and a zip code that we like, and they're like, yeah, yeah, let's set an appointment for Friday, right? Let's set an appointment for Friday. And at, in that zip code, the price point you initially kind of talked about over the phone and set an appointment, you're like, hell yeah, this, this, this is a good one. So all week you're looking forward to Friday, you wake up on Friday, the flowers smell better, your coffee tastes a little better, you're going to an appointment where at that price point you're going to kill it and everything's good, there's no traffic, things are going well, you get there and you hear the words from a seller that no one ever wants to hear. Because you were you were assuming things and you were excited, right? Yeah, you walk in, yeah, I'll show you around, yeah, I talked to, talk to my uncle, he's a realtor, he told me what he thinks I should get for the property. You're not, all of a sudden the day's going bad, there's traffic, you're hitting potholes, the coffee tastes like shit. Right, and uh, you did that to yourself. You can't control what a seller is going to want for a property, or, or if they're going to change their mind. But if you go in assuming that you're always going to be a part of price, they're at, they're at 200, you're at 180. Then you're going in prepared. So what we do is this: when we when we teach you know some of the seller waltz and and uh, s some techniques on top of that called being the most valuable, um, we do things that get us appointments where other people can't get appointments and then create the relationship through the um, seller wall, right? So on the front end, uh, when we're talking to homeowners, we say, hey, yeah, we're just happy to be talking to you. And, and in fact, uh, we don't, this is technique now, we don't buy We don't buy our house. We, we try to help everyone that we talk to. Yep. It puts everybody at ease when you say that. Uh, I repeat, hey, we don't buy our house. We try to help everyone that we talk to. In fact, my team was in the neighborhood and went by your house. We'd love to see it. And uh, whether you want to sell now or 10 years from now, make an offer. Um, but in the spirit of just helping, like we see that the grass is tall, um, whatever day and time you set for us to come by, we'll be there an hour early. If you'd like, we'll cut your grass for you. So you don't get code violations. They're like, what? And folks, we do it live, by the way, at the two day blueprint, at the end of the two day blueprint, the very last thing we do is we make phone calls with, to sellers live in front of you and you hear us do all this stuff live, but you'll hear them get quiet on the phone. Like you'll, you'll what? It messes with their head. Again, it's 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 verbiage that normal normal companies like ours aren't doing, and just you stand out. Yeah, they're like you you cut my grass. Yeah, look, hey, we love the area. Like we don't buy grass. We try and help people we talk to. So we get appointments, and there's several things that we do to be more valuable that they remember us. Uh, whether they want to send an appointment that day or not, we'll follow up with them um, in our tracking systems. 
um, just like everybody else would follow up, right? But we get appointments at a much higher higher rate than our competition. And like you said, you guys go to title company every time you go. Every time you guys go to the title company, we're there because we're there several days a week, closing deal after deal after deal, right? Uh, now, on the flip side of that, on the negotiation side, um, we expect to be a part on price. They're at 200, we're at 180. We just we do techniques like blame it on our partner, blame it on our boss. But hey, I got one more house to see. I, I think we're going to want to come to an agreement. But you're here, and we're here. Um, if if we're at 180 and you're at 200, if if my boss comes back and says. Hey, let's go ahead and be a solution for them at 193.5. Are you saying that we can't do business together? Because I, I mean, I just don't want to waste your time. No homeowner wants to say that. They'd rather be done with this whole process, just like you'd rather be done negotiating and get to the finish line, no matter what happens, right? Well, it's very hard say, too. Like, if the answer is yes, then they they have no motivation to work with you to sell to you, right? Yeah, correct. So we we teach you if they say yes or no to those things. So when we teach you the seller vaults. We go through several different techniques to where they'll say yes or no to things, and then I slow down and deconstruct it, just like we did to Ryan in class. I said, don't sell them, and he fell apart after three minutes, right? Yeah, he's right in the face. I'm glad you didn't pick on me. So. Yeah, I was, I was debating on picking on you. So so what I mean is this, folks. So most of the time, the buck, well, no, I'm not. You know, you said to her, if my boss says, let's be a solution on the day you want to close, um, and it's 193, we can't do business together. Most, most homeowners will say this. Well, no, I'm not saying that. And you never let them finish their sentence. I say, oh, okay. I was just making sure I didn't want to waste your time. Now I've got them down to 1935. Because they'll say, oh, I'm not saying that. Well, I don't let them finish because they'll say, oh, I'm not saying that, but I really want 200. Yeah. So I don't ever let them finish. So because they don't want to say that you can't do business together. So I'm using that to my advantage. Now, after that, just one more little tip for you is that then we go into different techniques that they'll say yes or no to. There's four or five of them. After the cash offer, we go in, hey, we can work with you this way. If you're interested, if you are, great. If you're not, no big deal. I'll tell my boss. <clears throat> I'll tell my boss. Yeah. Then we'll go to another one and another one. And so each yes or no that they say to that tells me something. Now, I'm not going to go into detail, but if they say yes to anything after my cash offer, they just told me that they're willing to go on a ride with me, me which means immediately they didn't even know that they did it, that – they're not really as motivated to sell because they're willing to go on a ride with me to get their money in different techniques and different ways. And so, so what I would tell you is that if you have that skill set now, all of a sudden without a seller even knowing what's happening, you know what their real motivation is. If they're not motivated and willing to go on a ride with me, then why am I going to beat them up about the roof and the foundation like every other investor? Um, I'm going to be more valuable to them. I'm going to market their home for free, all these different techniques that we taught you guys. So that when they decide to sell, they choose us. It's, it's not even a fair fight. Yeah, that, that's a huge one that we've implemented about trying to basically that verbiage of saying, "Hey, we don't buy every house, but we try to be helpful." We're, we're really implementing that, and uh, I think we found new buyers. Right, I don't know, the deal might not come to fruition, but we're finding new buyers because the whole the whole world of like city five percent ARV minus repairs and all that stuff. Uh, that's that all good. That's all good and great, and that's how I want to buy property so for our rehabs, our rentals. But there's people that don't use that rule book. And you yeah. don't know those buyers. So when you have the opportunity to market a property for free, you find those buyers. And now guess what? You just built a buyer's list. Yeah, because we use techniques like this. We're like, hey, look, like I said, we don't buy our house. So I just appreciate the fact that you're not using a real – you're getting another technique out of me. It's good, oh. good work by yourself. <laughs> uh, hey, I just appreciate that you're not using a realtor to save money. So um, even if we're a part of price, uh, like I said, just appreciate your time. I'll help you market your home for free to multiple different websites. All I ask is that if anybody ever needs help and we've helped you, that you would think of our company and recommend us. And then we'll market their home for free to multiple different sites, find people that are interested to pay more. So instead of me just following up because I was a part of price, now I found somebody that will pay more. Now I write a regular contract and I close the deal and make money out of thin air. Yes. How often would you take them down that path? Do they come back around? end up going back to your cash offer? Um, I would say since we offer it every time and we teach you to do that, like I would say 20% of the time they end up 20 to 25% time yeah. when they decide, okay, it's been long enough. And these people were nice. They help market our home yeah. for free and offer to cut our grass and all these other techniques that I won't go into. It, it's a no brainer for them. They choose us. Yeah. They actually call us back and, um, and you hear it sometimes when we're making follow up calls live at the end of class, like we told you, we, we cold call and do follow-up calls. And we hear on the phone, they're like, we, 
we're, we've decided to sell. We want to sell to you. Yeah. They're like, we have a hundred people beating down our door. We want to sell to you. It happens all the time. And I always tell everybody, I'm like, it's not an accident. <laughs> Might be on purpose. <laughs> Nothing by accident. Jason, yeah. I'm curious what you think mm -hmm. about the whole fad of virtual wholesaling because everything involved with a lot of your methods depends on being in front of the customer in their living or providing value. So yeah. I'm sure you get all these acquisition companies coming that are doing this model nationally. So yeah. how did have you had to kind of tailor things to fit the new ways um, or? Yeah, no. So um, at the blueprint, so when we go over seller walls and negotiations, there's also a tab called scalability and leverage because quite frankly, that's what these big companies hire me to do. Um, so normal blueprint, clients come to us that are doing zero to five deals a month that want to go to 10 deals a month and show, hey, show us not five ways like everybody else, 35 ways and how to do this thought budget. The other 20%, like you said, come, uh, we talk about come for just purely acquisitions, but they're doing it virtually in other cities. So there's a tab called scalability and leverage where we teach you, hey, here's how you do this virtually in other cities. Um, the seller walls and our techniques that, that we do, it's not just predicated on being in person in front of the homeowner. Um, you just remove one or two things from your verbiage, as you guys know. You just remove one or two things from the way you talk to them, and then now you're doing the same thing uh, virtually over the phone. So. Uh, one, we teach you how to do it in other cities because, quite frankly, some of these companies that hire us to do a thousand homes or whatever in a short amount of time, uh, a lot of times their hub is in like Dallas, but they're they need a thousand homes in Dallas and San Antonio and you know El Paso, sure. right? So, so we teach you how to do it virtually, and um, there's nothing wrong with doing it. We live in a world of technology; it's yeah. it's it's not hard to do. You just need to create the relationship. We also teach you how to have boots on the ground too. So when you're doing it virtually, we teach you exactly what to do, what what type of person, what they're supposed to do and not do for you. you you'll teach them the seller walt so that they can go to those appointments live in person as well. And I always tell everybody this, uh, we do it virtually all the time. Um, I've got deals going on in multiple different states right now, as I sit here. And we do it virtually all the time. Um, but I also like to have as a, as a, you know, my ace in the hole, uh, somebody that can go live on the appointment in, in a marketplace. I'll train somebody on the seller waltz. Here's why: you always get a better deal when you're live and a person in front of them. Because oh, when you do this over the phone, and there's nothing wrong with doing it over the phone, we do it all the time. But the contract you write virtually over the phone and close the deal, make money, right? That contract you write over the phone is never going to be as good as the contract you get when you do have somebody go in person because. Over the phone, you can't see, you can't really see what the neighborhood looks like. You can't see the neighbor's house or the stuff in the house. So when well, I walk in, read a person's body language, or you know, a lot, a lot of people might not let their guard down totally over the phone. Correct. Yeah, it, it's just in person. In person always wins over virtual. Yeah. Uh, we close deals virtually all the time and make money and deposit checks, but in person always wins because I just said, just even in its purest form, folks. I'm, I'm going to an appointment physically versus virtually over the phone. As I pull up, say, hey, nice to meet you. Hey, what's going on with the neighbor's house? Sure. You can't do that virtually over the phone. The moment I say that, when, when there's a house near an appointment, I, it's an easily an extra five to ten grand off, and it's another five, ten grand in my pocket. Hey, what's going on with the I don't say, oh, man, what's going on with this neighbor? I say, hey, what's going on with the neighbor's house? I might want that, too. But I make it be known, so they're like, yeah, you know, it is. Yes, it's going to get fixed up anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've got this house next door to a rental that we own that we know is vacant. It's run down. We try to get a hold of these people. We finally did. But we, we actually asked Alyssa and Pat next door, like, hey, man, we need help. You guys can find the unfindables. So if you can get a hold of them, great. We'd love to buy it. <laughs> so yeah, do actually, what you do. Actually, you need to add another uh, uh, step in your, in your marketing technique because the way Pat did that, is he went the he went he walked around the house. There was a car in, in the backyard that had a for sale sign on it, <laughs> and he called the number. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he got a hold of the guy, so that's pretty cool. Um, and Ninja, Ninja, Ninja we, yeah. Folks, if you're hearing this, imagine a world. Imagine a world where we break stuff down for you at a level that's so far superior to anything that you've ever seen or heard. Imagine a world where when you wake up with your operations map all the way down to how many minutes it should take you. 
that you wake up with unbelievable bone crushing clarity on how the day's gonna go. No one can tell you how the day's gonna go. And the most fun of all is that, and then imagine a world where every time you shake another investor's hand, once you're done with the blueprint, you've got the back end negotiations and deal structure, the front end 34 ways, free direct mail, 18 of the 34 techniques are free. Imagine when you shake their hand, you can just look straight to an investor's soul and be like, yeah, no chance. <laughs> Not in a bad way, because you'll find out what they want and beat them to those properties 34 ways and say, is this what you want? Is this? But they have no chance, folks. This isn't a fair fight. If you want to dominate your market, you got to call Jason. That's it. Bottom line. Um, I'm sure you get a ton of newbies reaching out to you, yeah. trying to get into their first deal. They can't yeah. afford maybe to go to the, the two-day blueprint yet. So. Yes. What advice do you give to those people, like how to get their first deal, where to start? Is there 30 different ways? You're trying to teach everybody to do it. Um, yeah, so in, its, so in its purest form, I'll, I'll just teach you one more technique here. What I would do, if you're just getting started, um, I would, uh, and it's going to sound guru-y, um, but I'm going to add an extra wrinkle to it that actually turns it into something real. And without even meeting me yet, hopefully you appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, Look, drive for dollars. Now, I know you heard that stuff, but here's what you're going to do. Here, here's why. Build the biggest list of houses that need work because no one can buy that list. Everybody can buy a vacant list in your city. Everybody go to a property stream and get some high equity, equity, you know, high equity lists and absentee on it. You can do all that shit. Well, now you compete against everybody. Build a list of property that need work on your own because no one can buy that list, number one. Number two, the reason it's so valuable if you're just getting started is that that house needs work, someone owns it, and nothing's happening with it right now. And it's probably because of the normal marketing techniques and channels that all these gurus teach, which is postcards, letters, and text messages to be consistent, is a, it's not working on those people, right? So here's one extra thing that you'll do, and it's one technique that we teach in the blueprint. I tested 200 variations of door tags. So what you do is um, create an ink stamp from Office Max, it's the size of a post-it note. So just walk into Office Max, say, can I get an ink stamp made the size of a post-it note? And they'll say, sure, what does, it, what does it need to say? And you're going to have them make an ink stamp that says, hey, call me by your neighbor, Jason, with your phone number on it. So put your name and phone number on it. And then grab all the post-it notes and just stamp them all while you're watching TV. When you're out driving for dollars, stick those on the door of the house that needs work, and they're going to call you. Yep. Hey, I, I was calling you about my neighbor, and they're going to say, hey, what address was that? Because I put that on two houses, even though you might have done 100. Yeah. And they'll say one, two, three, K to the end. Now I know what lead it is. And here's a technique. You're, you're going to say, well, I was talking to one of your neighbors a couple streets over about a house, and they said that your street might be a good street to talk to homeowners about buying their house just the way it says. So thank you for calling me back. That's why I put it on your door. I'd like to give you an offer on the house whether you want to sell an hour or 10 years from now. Again, thank you for calling me back. That technique, when you deploy that technique on houses that need work, costs you less than two cents once you get your stamp made uh, and post-it notes are unbelievably cheap. The technique costs two cents and your phone will ring off the hook. You could mail to that same list and get a 1% response rate on direct mail and spend a lot more money, start spending money text messaging left and right and spend a lot more money. But that technique I already know gets an 18 to 22% response rate, which is Astronomical compared to some of the other efforts you made. Yeah, lucky to get one percent with direct mail these days. Yeah, one percent. Yeah, yeah that's great. Awesome, that's great advice, Jason. It's a ton of value we got out of going the blueprint, so I highly recommend it. If uh, no affiliate, no affiliate payouts or anything like that, we're, we legitimately. We yeah, Jack, they owe us. We got our return on investment before we ever went to the event. Yeah, that is that is funny, and I didn't know my team. By the way, just for fun, I didn't even know my team taught you guys that technique. So when you guys are saying, yeah, we're going to get this technique the team taught, taught us before we became the blueprint, I looked over my team on. <laughs> you know all secrets? We're good at sales too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, didn't say, I didn't say that you were. I didn't say you were. It's only because we helped chip in for the utility. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah, go. Fair yeah. enough. It's a, it's a petty technique. Yeah, it's a, win, it's, a, it's a win win. But yeah, so I mean, if you want to, if you want information on it, just go to the number two dayblueprint.com. So it's got what other clients say about it. It's got a breakdown of what we do, and you can schedule a phone call. And I take ninety percent of the phone calls when somebody wants. So when you schedule a call, we talk to you about your marketplace, what you're currently doing or not doing, what type of deals you're looking to do, and how fast you want to get there. And then in conversation, I reverse engineer it, and then 
and then we uh, schedule you for a blueprint if it's a, if it's a fit. But just go to the number two dayblueprint.com. You can see what people say, the breakdown, and uh, just schedule a call, and then more than likely you'll be talking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah guys, they're a huge help. Jason obviously knows what he's talking about, and I mean, it's just been awesome being next door neighbors to these guys. They've been hugely helpful to us in growing our business, and uh, so very thankful. Yeah, we'll put a yeah. link uh, to, to, the, to the site on the show notes. Sorry, right? Okay, so, cool. Actually, I have one more thing. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Put your investor investing banker hat back on. What do you think about this market? Where is it going? Oh, we can touch on oh, it. Yeah, so. Like uh, we all know the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get, like the clip notes. Yeah, we can. No, I mean, here, I'll, I'll just answer that. I just answered it um, uh, at the Blueprint this past oh, week because everybody true. was asking about yeah, it. Yeah. Jason, the market's hot, but, you know, they've stopped foreclosures. Nobody can be evicted. You know, everybody's just running in place. or stress. You know, are there going to be stress cracks? Is there, there going to be a tidal wave of foreclosures? And this, folks, um, I've been doing this so long. I've been through this wave two or three times. Yes, when they lift all these things that are stopping people from foreclosing or, or officially evicting people, stuff like that, there's going to be a there's going to be a lot of foreclosure stuff like that. Um, so two things. Right now, people are, should I attack pre foreclosures since nobody can be foreclosed on right now? Yes, because those people are still in bad situations. You want to create the relationship with them now. So. It really doesn't matter. He or she who has the best relationship closest to the deal with the homeowner, right? So while uh, everybody's like, I'm not focusing on that because there's, you know, they're, they're, they're not even foreclosing right now. I, that's easy for you. I would create relationships with all of them back. Yeah, and I, I know nobody's talking to you because they, they're just waiting for you to lose your house. I'm, I'm here to help. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. and so, so that one. And then two, yeah, there'll be a dip in the market. You know, um, values go up, values go down. Here's what I would tell everybody depending on what type of real estate strategies you're doing. Uh, the blueprint's designed to get to everything first. It doesn't matter to me if you want to wholesale because that's what we do. We do 70% wholesale. We do 15% fix and flip, 15% rentals. Um, it doesn't matter if the market's going up or going down. Well, Jason, if the market's going down, are we going to be able to wholesale? And this, there are people, and I and I work with these people, big, 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 big companies that are just sitting there, just like stocks, it's buy low, sell so high. If there's a 5% dip in the market, you're going to see a flood of money from all these big players coming up and buying stuff up. And you would think, well, if it starts to go down, why are they going to buy when it's only 5% down? Because they're going to keep buying as it goes down, and they're going to dollar cost average all of the houses they buy, all the way down to the bottom, because they know it's going to go back up. So there's going to be money that floods into the market. It's just like the stock market. Yeah, it's just like the stock market. They're going to buy while it's going down, and they don't care if it's here or here or here, because they're continuing to buy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, so that's what I would tell you is that, um, I've been through this several times. Um, you know, certain techniques will become sexier if there's a dip in the market, like a lease option. Because here's what happens is all these new investors will be like, hey, the reason I'm offering 60 and I know you want 100 is because the, the, the market's going down. You know that and I know that. I'll come in and offer them 100. I'm like, hey, look, I know the market's going down. I'll still give you 100. Just give me time to buy it. I'll do a lease option and let it float back up over time. And again, an option means I don't even have to buy the house. Because the only way I'm going to do a lease option, but I'm offering them 100 where everybody else is beating them up for 60 grand. Because I'll say, hey, I'll take over your payments at 600 bucks, and I know I can rent it for 900. I'm making 300 dollars a month on a house that I never even have to buy if I don't want to. I have an option to buy it at a higher amount, but I never have to buy it. So just some of those things. So it doesn't matter to me if the market goes up or down. It just um, tells me what what technique I'm going to utilize more. Sure. So what I just heard is there's going to be more opportunity for investors. In the oh, God. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Nothing to be afraid of, folks. Here, nothing to be afraid of whatsoever. And uh, a lot of beginners who aren't educated, they'll be like, well, you know, wholesaling was a fun ride while it lasted. I guess I'm going to have to do something else. And then they are mopey while you're sitting there still going after them, locking up deals because there's going to be people with big money that flood the market. So you're smarter than them. There's always going to need be a need for wholesalers. There's... We provide value to the marketplace. We provide inventory. There's record low inventory right now, right? So be nice to your local wholesaler. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wholesaling is never going to go away. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's Walmart's a wholesaler. Yes. Right. They Walmart. get things cheap and sell it for a little bit more and make money. Like, it's no different. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, your financial advisor is a wholesaler. <laughs> yeah, that's why, and again, I know exactly. And, I, you know, I know some of you out there listening to realtors. And I had my realtor's license for four years. I went to the dark side. And, um, but as a wholesaler, you can make more money than just listing a house and for 6% and 
getting half of that 6% or sometimes getting the full 6%, you can make a lot more money wholesaling. So I'm not saying to get rid of your license or anything, but like you can make a lot more money without all the rules of fiduciary responsibility. Yeah. Again, just on a soapbox for a second, but but um, really doesn't matter. You can make money when the market goes up, the market goes down. The whole game is this. Do you have superior ways to get there first? Are you not doing the same five things that everybody else does, right? So do you have superior ways to get there first? You saw some of the techniques that you were using them before you came to class, right? Uh, that don't cost are. anything. And then do you have superior ways to be the most valuable to a homeowner? Because you never, you can't control what did I teach you? Some will, some won't. Who cares? Some, yep. you, you, you can't control what a homeowner wants for a property, but you can control being more valuable than any other investor they ever talked to so that when they decide to sell, you win the game. So that's a, that's on purpose. It's deliberate. And uh, once you have that skill set, you can run circles around anybody in any marketplace. Well said. Boom. I think that's a great way to end it right there. Yep. Thank you very much for doing this, sir. I know you're a busy guy. Probably going to be back to Florida here soon. So fly back.